Welcome to the unit on microscopy. Throughout this unit, we're going to talk about microscopes and how they function and why they're so important to the field of microbiology. We're going to do some comparisons between different types of light microscopes and electron microscopes, and we'll talk some about why you might choose one microscope over another one. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Different types of microorganisms have different sizes depending on the type of microbe that it is. Viruses are the smallest of all microbes, typically ranging from 30 to 400 nanometers. Prokaryotes, on the other hand, will range up to about 5 micrometers, and eukaryotes make up the largest of the microbes, ranging from 10 to 100 micrometers. However, it's important to note that these are just average sizes. There are exceptions to every rule, and in fact, the largest known prokaryote is actually about 300 micrometers in size. That's just about large enough to be viewed by the naked eye. We're going to watch this short animation here to try to figure out different size comparisons and to better see what those sizes look like. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're going to start here with the rhinovirus. That's at about 0 0.03 micrometers. One thing you'll want to get comfortable with in this class is converting between nanometers and micrometers in millimeters. And so 0 0.03 micrometers is the same as 30 nanometers. As we move along the video, we're going to see here's our poliovirus. Notice these look relatively similar. But now we're going to move up, and we can see this is clearly a larger virus here. This is the influenza virus at about 100 nanometers. And here's the rabies virus at about 150 nanometers. I want you to notice not just the size, but that the structures of these viruses are very different. This lunar module looking guy is a bacteriophage, a virus of bacterial cells. And the smallpox virus is a larger virus, about 300 nanometers. Now we've jumped up in size. We're back to the prokaryotic range. We've got a staphylococcus, a lactobacillus, and an E. coli at about 2 micrometers in size. Now we're going to jump up again. We're moving into the eukaryotes. So here's a red blood cell at about 8 micrometers. And here's a baker's yeast. These are the yeast you use to make bread. Continuing to go up, here's one of a skin cell that's about 30 micrometers and a human sperm at about 60 micrometers. Jump up, we see a pollen grain. And this big spindly cell here, that's a neuron, so that's a nerve cell at about 100 micrometers in size. We continue moving up, we see a human egg at about 130 micrometers. And then we move into some of the eukaryotic microbes. So euglenas, diatoms, paramecium at about 250 micrometers, and this big guy is an amoeba. Some of these, such as euglena and paramecium, you've probably seen swimming around in pond water if you've ever looked at pond water under a microscope. And then we get up to a frog egg, which is one millimeter in size, and that's about the size that you can see comfortably with the naked eye. Because of their small size, all microorganisms must be viewed using a microscope, which means we didn't even know they existed until the microscope was invented. Antony van Leeuwenhoek is considered the father of microbiology because of his development of magnifying lenses powerful enough to observe microorganisms for the first time. Interestingly, Leeuwenhoek wasn't a scientist by training. Instead, he was a cloth salesman. He actually invented a better way to make stronger magnifying lenses so that he could observe the thread counts of the cloth he sold easier. However, his curiosity about the natural world led him to view other things under the microscope, such as water and blood. This is the microscope that he actually developed, and so it looks very different than microscopes you think of today. Realistically, this was just a magnifying lens. So the lens is here, and he would take a drop of liquid water or blood and put it right on the top of that needle. He would then look through the microscope from this side and be able to observe things inside the pond water, inside the blood. He made lots of sketches of his observations, which allowed him to actually publish in various journals at the time. Around the same time, Robert Hooke was also developing microscopes, although his lenses were not quite as good as Lewin Hooke's. He's most well known for coining the term cell because when he was looking at the remains of a plant cell wall under a cork, he thought they looked like the cells of a monastery. Lewin Hoke's novel lens making technique opened a brand new field of science, and the microscope is still an important tool in microbiology today. There are two key properties of a microscope that are required for viewing of microorganisms. 
magnification and resolution. Magnification just describes how much larger you're able to make an image of the object you are viewing. There are no units to magnification, so we typically just use an X to represent times bigger. For example, the image is 400 times larger than the actual organism. This magnification is just the ratio of the size of the image to the size of the object. So to calculate magnification, you just use the equation magnification equals image size over actual size. And you can see here the units have canceled out. And so we're left with our 110x magnification. Resolution of a microscope describes the clarity of the image that you're going to see. It's the distance that two objects can be, and you can still view them as separate. The lower the resolution, the closer the two objects can be. This is described as a high resolving power. A microscope has to be able to magnify an object to be large enough to view with the naked eye, but it must also have strong enough resolving power. You can see this with digital images. If you take an image with low resolution or a low number of pixels and you blow it up, you just get a blurry image when magnified. So we can see resolution here in the image. Here we have two dots that are a certain distance away from each other. If that distance away is larger than the resolution of the microscope, then we can see them as separate points and we get a nice clear image. However, if those two dots are closer together, so the distance between them is smaller than the resolution of the microscope, we can't tell that they are separate anymore, and that leads to a blurry image. An important skill in microscopy is to be able to calculate the magnification of an image, or use the magnification of an image to calculate the size of the organism you are viewing. Remember, any microbe you can see is an image of that microbe, because the actual organism is microscopic. We can use the equation magnification equals the image size divided by the actual size to calculate the size of microbes you are viewing under the microscope. An image taken with a microscope is called a micrograph. Not all micrographs indicate the magnification that was used in the image but they should all contain a scale bar, such as this one seen down here, that lets you use as a reference. The scale bar allows you to have a comparison size to determine the actual size of your organism. This is a two-step process we'll walk through on the next slide. Right, so remember, the equation we're using is magnification equals image size over actual size. And we're trying to solve this equation for magnification of this image. What that means is we have to have a number, a value to plug in for the image size and a value for the actual size. Remember, we're just looking at this micrograph of this organism. We have no idea what its actual size is. What we do have, remember, though, is the scale bar. And so this, for our first calculation here of magnification, is the importance of having that scale bar because it's gonna give us both an image size and an actual size. The actual size is written on the bar itself. So if you notice on the bar itself, there's the size value of 20 micrometers. What that value is telling you is that in actuality, the real size of that bar is only 20 micrometers in length. Okay, so that every scale bar will have a value written under it that is the actual size. So now we can start filling in the equation. We now know that magnification is gonna equal an image size over the actual size of that scale bar, which is 20 micrometers. To get the image size, we just need to know how big the bar is that we're actually looking at. And so that's why you can see down below, we have a ruler there to measure the image size of that bar. And if we trace that down to the ruler, it looks like that is about five centimeters in size. So then we just need to do our calculation. But notice your units are different. So one key you're gonna to have to get used to in microbiology is doing unit conversions, mainly between micrometers to millimeters 
or two centimeters or back the other way. Now, one key to remember to go from micrometers to millimeters, we're talking about a unit of three zeros. Okay, so we've got to go from micrometers to millimeters is a unit of three. From millimeters to centimeters is going to be a unit of one. If you aren't comfortable with these types of conversions, there is a practice guide on Canvas that you can go ahead and use to, to practice. So I'm going to do this conversion. I'm going to change the centimeters to micrometers. So we're going to say that magnification is going to equal five and then centimeters are larger than micrometers. And so when you have a number that you're going from larger to smaller, you're going to move the decimal point to the right. And we know that we're going to move three plus another one. So we're going to move the decimal point one, two, three, four spots to the right, which tells us that five centimeters is the same as 50,000 micrometers. Now we can do our 50,000 micrometers divided by our 20 micrometers. To get a magnification of 2,500 times. So this image bar that we're seeing is 2,500 times larger than it is in actual size. That also means that the organism in the picture is also 25 times larger than its actual size. Now that we know the magnification of this image is 2,500 times, we can also use that information to now calculate the actual size of the organism that's in the image. Remember again, magnification equals image size over actual size. We know that magnification is 2,500 times. We can calculate the image size by just taking the ruler and actually physically measuring the size of the image. So when we talk about image size, that's all we're talking about is an actual physical ruler measurement of what you're looking at. And so we'll just estimate this and say that the image size is 15 centimeters and we're trying to solve for the actual size. We're going to need to rearrange the equation so we would multiply both sides by the value and then divide by our magnification and what we'll end up with is an equation that looks like the actual size is going to equal the image size, which is 15 centimeters, over the magnification, which was 2,500. Remember, we're going to again want to look at units, and here magnification doesn't have any units. So technically, we could just do this division. But microbial cells are typically not measured in centimeters, and so I'm going to convert that to micrometers just so we get a more accurate measurement. And when we solve for this, we're going to find that the actual size of that organism is equal to 60 micrometers in size. That tells me this is likely a eukaryotic organism because that would fall within the range of a eukaryotic size cell.